Thank you for joining my presentation today. My name is Konstantin Gavrilov, and I am a software architect at IBM Systems and Storage. I am a coder and a technology leader. I have a vast experience in operating systems, security, clustering, RAS solutions, storage, and network protocols. I have authored multiple patent applications in the fields of InfiniBand, RDMA, storage interconnect, storage clustering, software deployment, and network protocols. In my spare time, I enjoy contributing to Linux kernel and Wireshark protocol analyzer. Today, we will talk about the shift in data centers towards the use of Ethernet technologies. We will go over legacy IP storage protocols, cover NVMe and NVMe over fabrics, and discuss implementation of NVMe over fabrics with RDMA and TCP transports. Today, we see that Ethernet data center market steadily grows in revenue. There is a continuous adoption of Ethernet in data centers, especially in banking, financial, and insurance sectors. The annual growth rate of investment in Ethernet technology steadily increases and is projected to surpass $45 billion by the year 2086. There are several reasons for this growth manifested in adoption, expansion, and migration. There is a need for higher speeds that is driven by advances in flash storage. And Ethernet has faster speeds. 100 and 200 gigabit are common for service today, and 400 gigabit is common for switches. For comparison with fiber channel, 64 gigabit is possible for service today, and 128 gigabit is possible for switches. Ethernet allows lower latency and has efficient RDMA transport, while it has lower cost per gigabyte per second. Why there is a need to implement another network protocol like NVMe over fabrics? As use of Ethernet grows, there is a demand to use different infrastructures, existing infrastructures that support RDMA of loads, emerging infrastructures that support TCP of loads, and future infrastructures that will support NVMe over fabrics TCP of loads. Also, with advances in the interconnect speeds, there is a need to use an improved modern protocol like NVMe over fabrics. <clears throat> it is not possible to understand the evolution of network storage without looking at its history. Let us take a look at legacy network storage protocols, which are NFS, iSCSI, and ISO. In the beginning, there was Unix. And in Unix, everything was a file. IO applications worked with blocking IOs on file descriptors. Circuits were also file descriptors, hence came NFS, Network File System. Developed by Sun Microsystems in 1984, it allowed a client computer to access files on a server computer or a network. It worked over UDP or TCP sockets. Today, NFS is supported by all Unix systems, Linux, Microsoft Windows, and VMware. It is also supported by the majority of NAS products today, and by various embedded controllers and storage devices. The next legacy protocol is iSCSI. It represents a storage evolution that was facilitated by the appearance of SCSI devices, from blocking I.O. to multiple asynchronous I.O. requests that use direct memory access. SCSI 1 was published in 1986, SCSI 2 in 1990, and revised in 1994. With the SCSI came faster speeds of storage devices. At the same time, network interconnects grew in speed towards 1 and 10 gigabit. Hence came iSCSI, pioneered by IBM and Cisco in 1998. It was released as a standard in 2000. Today, it is supported by all Unix systems, Linux, Microsoft Windows, and VMware, and is also supported by various embedded controllers and storage devices. Network technologies did not stand idle and evolved as well. RDMA extended the SCSI approach to network. With RDMA, we have submission queue and completion queue and direct memory access to transfer buffers. RDMA originated in 1999 and first InfiniBand specification was released in 2000. Similar to a leap from blocking file I.O. to a synchronous parallel I.O. with SCSI, 
RDMA allowed applications to, to switch from blocking I.O. on sockets to true parallel asynchronous I.O. operations on QPS or QPS. But RDMA also added support for multiple queues. Multiple connections are possible with RDMA. Each connection is a queue pair. It has a send and receive queue. Completion queues can be shared by multiple connections. Remote DMA transfer capability, this is what our DMA name stands for, is also present and is similar to DMA feature of SCSI devices, but between two endpoints in our DMA network. Our DMA has advantages over TCP, zero copy, our DMA, kernel bypass, lower latency, and over fiber channel, connection flow control and arbitration are provided by our DMA transport. It has lower latency. Our DMA transfers are transparent to target and initiator and do not require a software mediation. Our DMA require a reliable physical transport and was implemented and used on the InfiniBand networks first. Today, it also works with Rocky and iWork in Ethernet environments. With the appearance of our DMA, it was natural to use it to implement a SCSI protocol over RDMA. Hence came ICER, iSCSI extensions for RDMA. iServers publishes a drop in 2004 and as RFC in 2007. First open source implementation was published in 2007. ICER brings RDMA extension to iSCSI, namely, RDMA connections are used instead of TCP connections. Host addresses are sent with, with each I.O. request and the target does RDMA transfers instead of TCP transfers, ICER brings the following advantages, lower latency, higher throughput, and lower CPU utilization. And this brings us to NVMe protocol. NVMe specification was released on March 11, 2001, and was a joint effort of 80 companies. NVMe extended the multi-queue RDMA approach to flash storage. It was driven by flash storage advances and flash storage performance needs. Also, by storage performance needs for both initiators and targets. The key features and differences of NVMe protocol are performance. NVMe uses the proven and efficient RDMA paradigms for its implementation circular request and completion queues, consumer and producer indexes, doorbells, queue pairs, DMA transfers, polling, and interrupt support. NVMe uses multiple queues. This also helps performance. NVMe has a new and simple common set compared to evolutionary SCSI common set with a legacy baggage. NVMe protocol was designed from the start for network storage encapsulation and offload. How was it made possible? NVMe has standardized the format for comment and completion queue entries, which has allowed a single implementation for all PCI NVMe devices. Hence, a hardware target of load with direct access to the NVMe drives is possible with network adapters. When a NIC process NVMe of a fabric packet, it can access NVMe drives directly using the PCIe bus and complete the NVMe command in hardware. NVMe over fabrics uses the same format for submission queue entries and completion queue entries, which become common and response cap capsules in NVMe over F specification. NVMe was inspired by a DMA protocol and there was a common desire to extend the NVMe protocol to support our DMA and other transports, and hence came NVMe over fabrics. NVMe over fabrics specification was released in June 2016 for our DMA and fiber channel transports. Our DMA implementation followed, while fiber channel implementation was delayed by several years. TCP specification was released in June 2018. And VME TCP is very hot today and is demanded by many customers. The reasons for its popularity are, it works in all AP networks. It does not require expensive adapters and switches. It does not require complex priority flow control setup for reliable Ethernet. 
it works seamlessly in virtual machines. Hardware flows for NVMe over fabrics with TCP are beginning to emerge. NVMe TCP is supported by Linux and VMware, and multiple storage vendors are adding NVMe TCP support. RDMA transport binding for NVMe over fabrics was a natural extension. This is why it appeared quickly. With RDMA transport, each NVMe Q pair is bound to an RDMA transport Q pair. Reliable transport required by RDMA is independent converged Ethernet or TCP with IVOP. RDMA transport has advantages over TCP without a hardware of load. Zero copy, RDMA, kernel bypass, and low latency. RDMA transport has also advantages over fiber channel that we already cited. Connection flow control is provided by RDMA transport, lower latency, RDMA transfers are transparent to target and initiator, and use of higher speeds in Ethernet networks. With TCP transport, NVMe QPs are bound to transport TCP sockets. This is similar to RDMA transport, but unlike RDMA, TCP is a stream protocol, and data needs to be partitioned into PDUs or protocol data units. PDUs provide message boundaries, have a common header, and may contain data, header checksums, and data checksums. The following PDU types are possible with NVMe TCP. Connection request, connection response, terminate connection from host to controller or from controller to host, ready to transfer or R2T, host to controller or H2C, or controller to host or C2H transfers command and command response. And VMA over fabrics with TCP uses the following mechanism for data transfers. In response to a write command, targets send R2TPDUs. Multiple R2TPDUs can be set, sent in the context of a single NVMe command. Each R2TPDU has command ID, size, offset, and transfer time. In response to a R2TPDU, initiators send HTCPDUs. Multiple HTCPDUs can be sent in the context of a single R2TPDU. Each HTCPDU has comment ID, size, offset, and transfer tag. In response to a read command, the target send C2HPDUs. Multiple C2HPDUs can be sent in the context of a single NVMe command. Each C2HPDU has comment ID, size, offset, and may have success IO status in the last transfer, in which case completion entry will not be sent. Having discussed NVMe and NVMe over fabrics, we can discuss implementation of NVMe over F with our DMA and TCP transports. We will discuss our DMA transport implementation first. There are multiple RDMA transports available in Ethernet networks. Which one to select? This depends on the specific client needs and requirements. Let us discuss the possible transports. Rocky stands for RDMA over converged Ethernet. It encapsulates InfiniBand transport packets. Version 1 uses Ethernet link layer encapsulation, and version 2 uses UDP over Ethernet encapsulation. IVORP encapsulates RDMA frames using TCP or SCTP protocols. In either case, framing and encapsulation are done by the NIC hardware. Rocky version one is not routable and priority flow control is possible only with VLAN tagging. Version one is deprecated over the use of version two. Version two is routable and priority flow control is possible either with VLAN or DSCP tagging. Rocky has complete RDMA compatibility and lower latency, but requires lossless Ethernet and a complex network configuration. IVORP works over standard Ethernet and handles congestion more gracefully, but does not have complete RDMA compatibility. What are the key implementation points for NVMe over fabrics with RDMA? Implement in user space. It is easier, more robust, and faster close to the target code. Memory registration for each I.O. is expensive. It is recommended to pre-register all I.O. memory. 
Use of physically contiguous memory is recommended for large systems. It results in small adapter page tables that fit adapter memory. Large page tables will impact performance and the application start time. Use a multi-domain transport. With multi-domain, each fast thread has its own device context, shared receive queue, completion queues, and queue pairs, and runs its own event loop. This allows disabling on locks on fast I.O. path. Use affinity for performance, including affinity for event queues and IRQ vectors. We need to use RDMACM for connectivity. A bound RDMACM ID has a single device context for CM messages, hence use of dedicated CM thread and relaying of messages between the CM thread and the fast thread is needed. Creation or destruction of QPS and destruction of our DMACM IDs can be a slow operation. Use slow thread to implement them. Use QP cache to survive connect and disconnect storms during startup and failover. With QP cache, QPS are not destroyed but returned to the cache. Use shared receive queue to scale to many connections and share a finite number of IO contexts fairly between multiple connections in each fast thread. SRQ, our inner flow control, will block peers from sending more messages than the fast thread can handle. CM thread has two event sources. The first event source generates CM messages for DMA CM device. Upon a new RDMA CM connection request, the application selects the fast thread that will own the connection. Some intermediate RDMACM messages are terminated internally. Other RDMACM messages, accept, reject, disconnect, are relayed to fast threads that own the relevant connections. The second event source generates same requests from fast threads, connect, disconnect, accept, or reject. For these events, appropriate requests to RDMACM device are sent, and responses to fast threads are sent as well when appropriate. Both event sources can use select poll APIs or a low frequency timer around 50 milliseconds to clean events. As already discussed, fast IO threads use private completion queues and the shared receive queue and a private device context. Use of private device context allows processing of asynchronous events in the fast threads because async events like QP errors will arrive only for the objects that belong to the thread device context. Use of the same CPU for affinity of the thread and of IRQ vector will minimize kernel log contention on a bad path since the IRQ handler and the thread will never contend for the log because the IRQ handler cannot preempt the thread while it holds the log. Fast threads implement connection life cycle they react to port errors, IO errors, and QP errors, and initiate connection termination while waiting for all IOs to complete. When seeing IO completions, fast threads will invoke application callbacks that will handle new commands or the completion of transfers. Fast IO threads run their event loop and may handle multiple events. CM thread messages are the MACM messages relayed by the CM thread. Slow thread messages, responses to QP create and destroy requests. Asynchronous device messages, QP port and device errors, events generated by the hardware, and most importantly, sent and receive IO completions. Only these need to be polled at a high frequency. Adaptive polling can be used as a part of a system-wide strategy do not fall for a wide spectrum of event sources with a high frequency. When the target is idle, all event sources can wait for an event. When our DMA messages are seen, at a threshold rate, our DMA transport can request high frequency polling. Send completions can be starved over received completions and can be delayed. New IOs can arrive to a target before the target sees the completion of last transfers and start to sense, and thus before it releases uh, pending IO resources. Thus, the target needs to support hard polling for send completions 
when the allocation for a new I.O. fails on where, or when the send queue is full. We will now discuss implementation of NVMe over fabrics with TCP transport. There are multiple challenges implementing NVMe over fabrics with TCP. There are TCP stack performance limitations. There are zero copy limitations. There is no control for scheduling of IO processing in kernel space where TCP stack runs. Multiple CPUs will execute TCP without, a without ability of the application to control and schedule the execution. Because of this, there is a low contention in kernel. TCP is a stream protocol, and this brings additional complications. We need to implement PDU parsing because sends and receives may be incomplete. We need to take care of scattering and gathering of the buffers. With TCP, parallel asynchronous sends on the same socket are not possible, and parallel asynchronous receives on the same socket are not possible as well. With NVMe TCP, we need to receive a small PDU header to know what comes next. And finally, zero copy receives to known buffers are not possible with TCP. Let us consider possible solutions that can accelerate NVMe over Fabric's TCP performance. There are stateless uploads, but each NIC has them and there is no real differentiator. We can consider a TCP offload engine, but those do not help much. Typically, there is no user space support for direct programming with the toe and receives to dedicated buffers are still not possible with the toe. A hardware of load when the ME over fabrics with TCP would be nice, but there is no available solution yet. A custom TCP stack may eliminate some performance limitations of the present TCP implementation, but writing one is challenging and it does not solve scatter gather issues for sense and receives. There is Linux IO U-Ring RDMA-like API for asynchronous IO. It is new, allows easy implementation, and promises a good performance, but perhaps not as good as with the custom TCP stack. For the following discussion, we will concentrate on the hardware of load and Linux IO U-Ring options. Let us consider what a hardware offload solution may look like. When looking at traffic dumps, we see that there are similarities between NVMe RDMA and NVMe TCP. We see sent arc sequences in both. We see that RDMA read transfer exchanges are very similar to R2T and H2C PDU exchanges. We see that RDMA write transfer exchanges are similar to C2H PDUs. The only difference is that RDMA ARCs and RDMA transfer exchanges are generated by the hardware, but TCP ARCs and TCP transfer exchanges happen in software. If we implement the flow of these in hardware, can we have a performance that is similar to RDMA? Let us consider a NIC uh, with a tool that is able to classify and offload NVMe packets. We need a multi-domain transfer with send and receive completion queues and a shared receive queue per domain that uses the TCP offload engine of the NIC to send and receive data. The shared receive queue is populated with preposted buffers and captures only NVMe traffic. Traffic capture is done via classification and steering, both of which are a solved problem today and are present in many NICs. Steering of the receive traffic in NVMe QPIS to a specific SRQ is also done in the hardware to support multiple transport domains. Zero copy sends are not a problem. We can use the NIC tool to implement them. Connection establishment and classification are not a, a problem as well. Thus, receives that happen in the context of the data transfers are our only problem. How can we implement a zero copy receive for this receive traffic? Zero copy receives can be implemented as follows. The NIC of load needs to understand and parse PDUs uh, in the receive flow. Initiate a zero copy receives are needed uh, for read commands and can be implemented as follows. Initiator sets up IO buffers with a NIC command 
addresses against the command ID and then sends the read command. When the NIC receives and presses controller to host PDU header, it can complete the receive of the PDU to, to the application buffers since it knows the pairing between the comment ID and the buffer addresses. The application is then notified about the C2H completion and it knows that the transfer is complete. Target zero copy received are needed for write commands and can be implemented similarly. A target sets up IO buffers with a NIC command addresses against the comment ID and the transfer tag and then sends R2TPDU. Initiator will eventually send host to control a transfer. When the NIC receives and parses H2TPDU header, it can complete the receive of the PDU to the application buffers since it knows the pairing between the comment ID, the transfer tag, and the buffer addresses. The application is then notified about the H2C completion and it knows that the transfer is complete. We will now discuss implementation of NVMe over fabrics with TCP and IO Uring API. Let me first introduce you to the IO Uring feature of the Linux kernel. IO Uring, or Uring in its short form, is a new API for asynchronous IO that is similar in concept to our DMA and NVMe. When using the Uring API, there is a submission queue that is shared between the kernel and the application for IO submission, and the format of submission queue entries is standardized for all IO types. Also, there is a completion queue that is shared between the kernel and the application for IO completions, and the format of the completion queue entries is standardized as well. Additionally, the kernel and the application can be notified about new IOs and new completions. Using Uring has the following performance and implementation advantages. It supports affinity, polling, and kernel bypass via adaptive polling. It provides API that mimics our DMA API and allows minimal changes to the code to implement both our DMA and TCP. Among present solutions, Uring is the best performance option available for parallel asynchronous I.O. Uring solution is simpler than a custom TCP stack. Uring can provide performance that is similar to a custom TCP stack and use future performance improvements in both Uring and TCP. The key points in NVMe TCP implementation with Uring are implement in user space close to the target code, pre-register IO memory and sockets for faster IO operations. This is a Uring acceleration feature. Use a multi-domain transport with Uring queues per thread and with multiple sockets per Uring. Use of affinity is recommended. Use adaptive polling for receives. We know when to expect the data after the header is received. Use a dedicated thread to accept new connections and dispatch new connections to fast IO threads. Only one pending receive per connection is possible and only one pending send per connection is possible. We need to implement a TCP send queue for each connection in order to emulate parallel IO on a TCP socket. And the ME initiator can be implemented as follows. IO and admin queues are bound to TCP sockets that are bound to IO threads that use private queue rings. Each IO has its IO buffers specified by the IO context. Receive starts with a header, com common status T2H or R2TPDUs. Common status PDU will complete the IO. T2H PDU will trigger receive or transfer data to the memory specified by the IO context. A T2H PDU may complete the IO if the last bit is set. R2T PDU will trigger H2C transfer from the memory specified by the IO context. IO errors trigger a disconnect flow and complete the pending IOs. NVMe target can be implemented as follows. 
IO and admin queues are bound to TCP sockets that are bound to IO threads that use private U rings. Sockets are assigned to IO threads by the accept thread. Established connections always have one pending receive. Receives start with a com with a header, command or H2C PDU. Handling of command PDU will allocate IO context and assign buffers for new IO. Read commands will transfer data with C2H PDUs. Write commands complete receive to the IO context buffers for encapsulated data. Otherwise, R2T PDUs is sent. Uh, for the for H2C PDU, receives are completed to the buffer specified by the IO context. IO errors trigger a disconnect flow and complete depending IOs. How performant can be a NVMe TCP implementation? On this slide, you can see a performance comparison between RDMA and TCP targets running on the same server and using the same NIC. These data shall not be considered as a performance metric for a release product or as, a, or as an absolute performance metric for either of the protocols. This is a reasonable comparison between RDMA and TCP protocols. Both the target and the initiator were implemented in user space. The target used map memory to emulate NVMe namespaces. What do we see from these results? RDMA shines in latency and uses less CPU. Still, software TCP shows a potential. It can save costs and be attractive for target implementations where transport is not a bottleneck and sufficient CPU power is available. This data also shows that hardware flowed solutions for NVMe TCP will bridge the performance gap between NVMe TCP and NVMe RDMA. I am looking forward for these offloads to emerge. If you are a network vendor, please consider adding NVMe over Fabric's TCP hardware offload to your portfolio. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for joining. I will be glad to answer your questions during the Q&A session. Thank you.